Romance scams take a devastating toll on tens of thousands of Americans. Last night on the CBS Evening News, we looked at how payments are slipping past banks and law enforcement. Now Deborah Pata follows that money trail to West Africa. She takes us inside those dark, secretive rooms where scammers hide behind their keyboards on the hunt for new American targets. Down a dusty alley in Accra, young men cast off their true identities as they enter this apartment. They call it their hustle kingdom. Meet Ghana's Yahoo boys, online fraudsters who swindle Americans out of millions of dollars by luring them into romance scams. I go on online dating sites, mm -hmm. find a male friend. Abdullah, not his real name, is part of this syndicate that we filmed undercover. Late into the night, he scours online dating sites, preying on lonely older men over the age of 60, posing as this woman. I'll go on Instagram, use a girl's picture. I pretended to be a girl. Chat with him. The scammers pretend to be white American women residing in the U.S., tricking men into falling in love with them. But these are small-time hustlers working for a boss who sets them up with phones, laptops, electricity and internet. And there are hundreds more underground boiler rooms just like this throughout Ghana. And Deborah joins us now to talk more about the story. Thank you for being with us, Deborah. So why are these scams so effective and why do so many people fall for them? Well, essentially, they are set up in such a way that they're almost foolproof. They really cover all bases, making sure that there is no way the victim won't fall for the scam. They prey on the elderly, people who are vulnerable, maybe recently divorced or bereaved. And what they do is they trick them into falling in love. So they mm -hmm. think they're falling in love with a wonderful woman, their new love of their lives. They inundate them with flattery, text messages, send them little gifts. And once they've fallen really hard, then they throw in the business part of it and con them out of their money, basically playing on their emotions. They go to extreme lengths. They hire escorts and porn stars if the person insists on a video call and then slowly towards, you know, often after six months even, they'll say, oh, you know, we've inherited a gold mine in Ghana. Would you like to invest in it for our happy future together? And so people just fall for it all the time and it's costing this country Billions of dollars. And Deborah, you talked with some of those scammers. How do some of those scammers see themselves and what is driving them? Well, they're going to tell you that they come from poor backgrounds and that there are no opportunities and no jobs in Ghana. They essentially style themselves as a kind of Robin Hood, stealing from the rich to help the poor, the poor being them in this particular case. But make no mistake, they live very flashy lifestyles. The latest watch, the latest car, they throw beach parties. We actually filmed one group actually throwing money in the air, celebrating a big payout. So I'm not sure I really buy that. That argument. They also claim they help the needy. Um, I don't buy that argument either. The problem is that they get recruited because there is a lack of jobs and opportunity, but once in that life of crime and once they've had a taste of the good life, it becomes very difficult for them to leave. All right, Deborah, we appreciate you breaking that down for us. We are so grateful for that. Where You can see more of Deborah's fascinating reporting, Anything for Money, Inside America's Scam Epidemic. That's tonight on CBS Evening News at 530.